Susanna J. Dodgson, December 5, 2021. You're looking at the major intersection in Haddonfield. In the distance, you can see an acme. Uh, that acme used to be a Quaker meeting house. Quakers uh, used to argue a lot. And um, one of the results of those arguments were <clears throat> having two Quaker meeting houses within a quarter mile of each other. Well, in the 1950s, the problem was solved and all the Quakers moved into this meeting house, which you can just see through the trees, but I'll show you in more detail in a minute. I'm in the Friends Graveyard, Haddonfield Monthly Meeting Graveyard, um, which is filled with people I've heard of and also people I knew. I have been focused on and off on Haddonfield Meeting, as have my children since 1991, so th 30 years. So I'm just going to walk around the graveyard. And there's a reason for this. The reason is that next Sunday, December 12th, 2021, Haddonfield is marking 300 years of having Quaker meetings. Now, what is a Quaker? Well, officially, we are the Religious Society of Friends, but uh, I learned recently that we are the Religious Society of Friends of Truth, which I actually like even more. This graveyard is very well maintained and has been, as have been the grounds of the Friends meeting ever since I came in here as a refugee from an Episcopalian church where the priest was saying that uh, killing Iraqis was a good idea. And as much as I love hymns, I do not like sermons. Sometimes they're very good, but uh, I prefer to do my own reading and I prefer to listen to things that I want to listen to, which is very much in the manner of friends. Look at these beautiful trees. I just walked past a grave of uh, Thomas Redman. Um, there were a number of Thomas Redmans. I actually live on Redman Avenue, named after one of them. Um, one or more were apothecaries. And in Haddonfield Meeting, there are descendants still to this day of Thomas Redman. What? So we actually have, not only is the meeting 300 years old, but we actually still have living links to when it was started. Now I know Haddonfield was named after Elizabeth Haddon, who showed up in New Jersey to claim some land which had been given or bought by or something by her father with uh, no curiosity as how they got it because uh, that's the way colonists do you know good people go to church never hurt anyone something appears Right. It's theirs. Okay. Anyway, apart from that, uh, the sad beginnings and discussion over who really owns this property, it's been well cared for by generations of Quakers for 300 years, which I think is pretty good. And if um, you have any other ancestry as an Indian, Lenny Lalape, 
indigenous person, whatever you call it, you, everyone is always very welcome to Quaker meetings. We don't pass around a plate. We don't have the expenses that uh, Episcopalian churches have because we don't hire ministers. We don't buy flowers for altars because we don't have an altar. We meet in a simple room and we sit quietly in our meeting for worship. And it's lovely. Quakers believe we're grown-ups. We can believe what we are led to believe. And we worship the way we worship. I, I worship by listening to songs, hymns, African-American songs, church songs on Sunday mornings. I read something inspirational. Pre-pandemic, I walk a mile to the station, walk through Center City, past Benjamin Franklin's grave, and sit quietly on the meeting house in Arch Street that was built on land that belonged to William Penn and has been used as a graveyard. And these gorgeous, gorgeous. This graveyard is just lovely. That building next to the graveyard is a fire station. That might have been Quaker land too, but a lot of things have been sold and bought and one thing or another. Across the street, which that's Haddon Avenue, across the street from Haddon Avenue, there's a big law firm. That used to be a retirement home for Quakers and unfortunately it was sold and um, old people, and I'm an old person, I'm 70, old people either, either have to drive or not come. I do not drive, not anymore, I walk. So here in front of us is the Sledding Hill. Now, it's December 5th, but it has been known to snow this time of year. Today is absolutely gorgeous. It's in the 60s. It's just, it's a perfect fall day. You can see here that there's an incline. And when my children were little, and I imagine the same thing is, is true now, um, whenever there was enough snow to sled, first day school was cancelled on that day, and uh, sleds were brought out, and meetings, the whole meeting members and attenders showed up at the top of the sledding hill and sled down in the snow. We have uh, meeting members who were asked who asked to be buried on the on the sledding hill because it's just such a delightful time. Spending eternity under the <laughs> on the ground so that when winter comes you can hear children sledding on top of you. Which of course brings about an, another important point. You can see that the gravestones are very low, which is very typical of a Quaker graveyard. We don't like to make a fuss. You don't see angels and elaborate, anything elaborate. You just see a name and date. Date of birth, date of death, that's it. Some people have added titles and degrees, but that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I suppose that it's certainly an identifying mark, but um, when you're dead, you actually don't have a title and you don't have a degree. You've become one with light, one with dust. Look at these beautiful trees. Oh my. So I, act, I took a photograph in 2004, 
I believe, 2003, in February. Um, what happened, they'd had a very heavy snowstorm and then it had become very warm and everything had melted. So there was, act there was a lake formed down the bottom here, a rather gorgeous lake. And I have photographs of my children walking around the lake. Lovely. I haven't seen that since. <laughs> it was uh, quite a phenomenon. It all depended on freezing and thawing at the right time. Now, this really does look like a very empty graveyard. Um, a graveyard that the Arch Street Friends, who are, the official name is the monthly meeting of the Friends of Philadelphia, but we meet at 4th and Arch Street at the Arch Street Meeting House, which used to belong to us. The graveyard that we have in common with the Central Philadelphia monthly meeting, which meets at 15th and Cherry, is the West Philadelphia burial ground. And that has become a very popular graveyard with um, anyone in West Philadelphia because we don't charge very much. And that's becoming filled up very rapidly. I'm not sure how long they're going to continue keeping it open for everyone else. They're going to run out of space. But you can see that that hasn't happened here. And it looks like we haven't hadn't filled burial ground. It's not open to outsiders because I don't see anyone anyone here who wasn't part of the meeting. However, having said that, there's a lot more graves here than you can see. Early Quakers were buried under wooden crosses, wooden slabs, with the understanding that you're not supposed to be remembered after you die. The only reason you'll ever really be remembered, apart from your immediate family, is because you did something very bad. So this lovely, understated way of death Quaker funerals, and I've been to quite a few. They're very quiet. Oh, here. This is Lyle. Lyle was, um, he was like the grandfather of the meeting. I always thought it was interesting because he was born October 26, 1918. My father was born October 26, 1919. Um, and he died a long time ago, in the 1980s. But Lyle and Florence, well, Flo, we called her, they were keystone <laughs> of the meeting. Um, he had been a pacifist in the Second World War and was buried. Oh, sorry, and <laughs> he's buried now, and was um, imprisoned for being a pacifist. His brother, Arlo Tatum, was very much involved in the anti-war, anti-Vietnam War draft processes. So he's well, well known as, at his time, he was well known at his time. And it's interesting because I, whenever I find a Quaker, any, any part of the country now, and I mention Arlo Tatum, everyone knew him. Here we are. Look at that. Mary Farrow. Mary made the best cherry pie in existence. Once a month we have a um, covered dish in most Quaker meetings. We do at Arch Street, or we did before the pandemic. And in Haddonfield, we always had a cherry pie that Mary Farrow made. She and her husband, Merritt Farrow, died very close to each other. I went to both of their funerals. Now Mary, um, I called her after my daughter. My daughter was born 9.09 a.m. <laughs> on a Sunday morning. And um, I immediately called Mary and uh, another member of the meeting 
and told her that my daughter was born and told her what her name was. Now, Haddonfield meeting for worship is um, 10 o'clock in the morning, goes from 10 to 11. And at the rise of meeting, my daughter's birth was announced. So my daughter wasn't even two hours old and she was introduced to Haddonfield meeting. which is lovely. I, so many of my friends are buried here, and people that I knew peripherally. This, um, this lady here, Mary Stuart Fisher. Okay, it includes an MD after, which most of them don't include degrees. Um, she was a very prominent radiologist and uh, her husband, who's a great age, is um, prominent in Philadelphia in the Right Angle Club. And here we have a, a, young, a young girl I remember as a young girl. Uh, she had uh, some horrible disease, but she died too young. She should have. Uh, it's always sad when young people die. So I wonder how many there are really buried here. How many are under here? I don't know. See, look at this. You can see that used to be a grave, but it's all worn off. So we don't know. And here's another one. Considering people have been buried here possibly since for 300 years, I do know, look, you see, there's more here. It would take um, a very clever group of archaeologists to figure it all out, but it doesn't really matter. We know they're here. We know that Elizabeth Haddon, the original lady after whom Haddonfield was named, is buried here somewhere. So one of these, one of these stones contains her. Well, this is new, so there's a bench. Oh, that's nice. So you can look up and you can see. What a lovely quiet place to rest forever. See there's more of here. On the left there's um, Haddonfield Friends School which started in 1786. So that's kind of a youngster compared to the um, the meeting. And the, here in front of us is the Haddonfield mon monthly meeting meeting house. You know, it's interesting because uh, after 30 years of stopping by, I mean, when the, my children were young, of course I was here every week. But over the 30 years, the grounds have always looked gorgeous. The graveyard has been well maintained. The meeting house, look how beautiful that is. You hear the birds. Look at that, oh, lovely. We had a um, simple gifts today on tables right in the front of the meeting house, which was lovely. I made a couple of uh, bookmarks. It was nice to talk to friends. This beautiful holly tree. Gosh, look, they've all got red berries on them. Wow. The holly trees are doing so well. 
And here is another view of the of the graveyard. Now everyone is invited here on every Sunday, certainly. But this is special, specially invited. Next week, next Sunday, on December 12th. For, three, for the 300th anniversary of the monthly meeting at the Friends of Philadelphia. They're asking you to RSVP. Go to their website, Haddonfield Quakers, and uh, tell them you're coming because they, they have no idea how many to expect, which is, of course, a problem with the pandemic. We don't know. And we just recently heard about Omicron variant. We don't know if this is worse, if we're at the start of a new nightmare, or if it's not much to worry about. This looks like a sheep pen. These, these were always open. But suddenly there have been all these school shootings all over the place, but not, not in Haddonfield, it hasn't happened. But um, somehow corralling children in sheep pens apparently makes them safe or something. Not sure. Maybe there's another reason. Maybe there's a game to play there. But you can see the grounds are very well cared for. The trees are healthy. That street's called Friends Avenue. See over there is the Catholic Church, uh, Christ the King. So Haddonfield is not lacking in churches. And here we have a Everyth it's interesting, everything was always open. Now there's fences and little sheds. Uh, it's like, are we scared? What are we scared of? Okay. Well, this is Susanna J. Dodgson. It's December 5th, 2021. I'm in Haddonfield, New Jersey. And once again, if you have any way that you can come to Haddonfield on December 12th at 10 a.m. for meeting for worship and to congratulate Haddonfield for being such faithful servants for 300 years. What a wonderful achievement. Thank you for listening to this. Um, my website is peacescientist.org. May you be blessed. May you always walk in the light. <laughs>